You know, so, and how awkward would it be if I just mentioned 9 11 and started blubbering? <laughs> Or anything worse than somebody cries like way too long after 9 Oh, by the way, we're sitting in, in Jim's fucking fabulous hotel room, so that would really be fucking uncomfortable. Just creepy, yeah. On, it'd be, it was, it, as long as the mics are on and I feel there's an audience, even though I can't see him, yeah. it wouldn't be that bad. But if, if we were just here by ourselves, which fucking takes me back to a moment. Cleveland? That I Yes. I was in a hotel room pissed. And you fucking knocked on the door and talked me off the fucking ledge. It was it was the gig after the Philly yeah. gig where I was like, I knew that they were going to boo me again just to boo me. Rather than Philly, they booed me because they didn't like me. And then um, by the time the fucking Cleveland gig, you guys gave me so many props that the crowd wanted to see it again. Yeah. So I was asking uh, somebody there, hey, just put me on early. Give me a chance. Just give me a chance. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 don't worry. And then I was in the exact same spot. I go out there and I just walk out. I'm on for two seconds. They just start booing me just to boo me. And I was right. like, look, I'm not going to pretend to get mad because you guys are pretending to boo me. And it didn't go anywhere. And I, I got off stage and I was fucking livid. I remember me and Jeff will still laugh about it because Jeff was like, no, no, I'm sorry. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck this venue. <laughs> fuck this state. Fuck everything. And I left. I think I threw a water bottle. Yeah, you were very unhappy. I was I was not happy. And oh no, because me, I catastrophize in my head. So I was like going, Oh my God, I've become the Booham guy and I'm going to go any, everywhere sure. I go. I kind of forgot because I had been on the virus tour long enough that um, to me a normal show was fucking 10,000 people. Right. And I wasn't thinking like my next gig after that tour was at the punchline. It's like a cozy right. 200 people and I can see everyone, you know. And so if anybody fucked with me, I, c I could get them. And uh, so anyways, so I go back to the fucking hotel room. Uh, ready to quit the business, and I hear a knock on the door, and you came walking in and f fucking talked me off the ledge. I remember that. I don't even remember what we sp we spoke about. I just remember you were very upset, and I knew why, and you were like, they fucking – and I was like, dude, they did it because they were trying to recapture a moment that they wanted to be a part of something that was very amazing to them as opposed to they hated you. You know what I mean? Oh, but I, I didn't And I was you. convinced everyone was out to get me. The The crowd, the show – uh, uh, not what, what, Live Nation, everybody. I'm mean, still but, convinced they're out to fuck me. I couldn't get on the Oddball Tour this year. <laughs> I can't get on the Oddball Tour, and they're doing fucking the Tweeter Center and uh, and played uh, half PNC. those places. What's that? You've played half of those places. Yeah, and I can't get on the. Uh, I couldn't get a fucking set on the Oddball. Ah, whatever. They'll have it next year. Because then you're on stage in front of ten thousand people, and, and getting an unfair booing. That was when we first started on K Rock. Right. And you had been not – the XM listeners loved you, but they, the K-Rock listeners didn't know you as well at that point because it was a new thing and you had been away. And they're booing you and you pull out this fucking – one of the great moments of stand-up that I've ever witnessed, which was just turning 10,000 Philadelphia fucking monsters. And they're the worst crowds in the world if they don't like you. And you turned them. You did the impossible and that's, that, that's like – Well, that's I, I lucked out the that. sports thing. There was enough – Jersey and New York sports fans, you know, the Patrick division and, and uh, whatever, the ML, the National League East yeah. or whatever. There's enough Mets fans that hated the Phillies. There's enough fucking fans that everybody hates the fucking Flyers, you know, except for Philly fans. So I was able to do that. But what was funny was I actually, when I finished that set, I felt bad because you had to go on next, and I was like, oh, God, you know when a comic burns down yeah. the room. And that was basically, that was not a, like, you can burn down the room, I feel, as the headliner. But to burn down the room where there's another guy going up on basically your showcase night, I was sitting there. I thought you were going to be mad at me. And Not I was, and, and you went out, never addressed what just happened, went right into your act and fucking smashed him. Yeah, I mean, again, they knew me, though. It was like the, 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 the terrestrial crowd knew me. So I had to, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they were expecting me to come out. But uh, I felt, uh, you know, if that, if that show had occurred six months after that, right. when that crowd knew you, that never would have happened. That, that was just – that was a really weird transition time. But what you did with that crowd – I mean, yeah, it was the sports knowledge. But it, it was about uh, the ability to pull that out in front of all those people because it took a while. They didn't just start laughing. Well, you know what? I had been booed before a couple – I got booed uh, on a Vegas show. I, and, and I didn't leave, but I didn't know – the first time you get booed, dude, it's fucking unreal. It's like – 
it's the weirdest experience because you have exactly what you want, the, to- the total focus of the crowd, but the exact opposite emotion. Right. I've always compared it to like, you know, when they do the reverse echoes on those Zeppelin things to make it seem like you're in hell, like the echo comes first before your voice. That's like sort of the stand-up version of that where it's like they're cheering, but they're booing. It's the most fucked up thing. And, and I remember after getting booed um, – just fucking walking through the hotel, going back to my room, and, st- and I started thinking about people in the crowd. And it's like, all right, Bill, you got booed, but you let that guy boo you? You let that woman with that awful dress, that guy with the big head? You could have at least said that. It was just so shocking the first time it happened. And also I, uh, you know, I did a lot of those, uh, the uptown rooms, that they called them, the black oh, rooms. black crowds, yeah. yeah. So you kind of had to get, you know, I was in fighting shape. So it somehow, uh, I just remember Opie coming through the, the curtain, Opie and Ant, I think he had his glass of red wine, and Opie just came walking through and was just like, he said, he goes, I was one for the ages, bro, and yeah. just came walking out. And what was funny was you went out and killed, and the second that was done, that was the end of the show, and then they brought me back out for the curtain call, and I got booed again, half clapping, half booing, and I remember there was this dude who ran up to the stage. He was going, Bill Burry, screaming, he's going, fuck you. Fuck you. And I'm going, what? And he's he's giving me the finger. He's going, fuck you. Fuck you. And I kept going, what? It's like, uh, you're giving me the finger. How do I not know? I just kept going, I, I, I can't you. I literally got him hopping mad. He was jumping up and down, screaming, giving me the finger. I just kept going, I, I can't. And I kept doing, <laughs> cupping my ear like, I can't hear you. And the guy went, fuck you. Fuck you. And it just I just laughed at him. And uh, that was, yeah, that was the end of it. And, uh. I remember I, I I rode back with Bobby Kelly, and um, I had a fucking splitting headache after it. And uh, I just remember riding back with Bobby, and and he was just laughing, going, "Dude, do you realize you just told ten thousand people to go fuck themselves?" And I was dreading it because I was like, "Fuck, I know somebody filmed that." Because I thought when it got on the internet. I knew comics would appreciate it, but I didn't know that I didn't know if fans would get it. If right. they if they would just be like, "Oh, you got booed, you sucked," you know, "fuck this guy," "ha ha," everybody laughing at you and shit, because you know can kind of go can kind of go either way. But uh, whatever, I, I we're here for you here. No, 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 no. Yeah, that that to me was uh, that was a fascinating thing to watch because it was legitimately funny stuff. It wasn't like you were obnoxious and got the crowd. Like you were really pounding them like a comic like that's what was so fun about it. if you had just taken your pants off and waved your cock at them and uh, like all right any idiot could well, you, still fucking hilarious though but you, it would be, that would have been much better obviously <laughs> but i mean that was that, that was still, uh, that would have been like instant legend but the fact that you got them as a comic, I, I, saw, I saw a guy do that did you i'm not gonna say because i don't want to get him in trouble sure. but i saw uh when i was doing late nights at the cellar do you remember how they used to have that water pipe they used to hang sure. just – and this guy used to go up. He's a fucking madman, and he used to fucking hang from that pipe by one arm, and he'd have this crazy look on his face. He looked like Charles Manson. I'm trying to let you know who this guy yeah. was, right? So he went on stage, and he's doing his fucking thing, and like really just one of these great comics where like just the pain of whatever he went through is yeah. right there on the surface. So if anybody moves, he's going to cut their head off. So there was some – woman who was all fucking dressed up or something sitting, you know, she's in her fifties and she's not laughing and he just keeps looking at her and he just finally just starts going like, isn't that right? Mom, huh? Mom, mommy. And he got in her face and he finally just goes, mom and screamed in her face. And she got like mad and she goes, uh, I, she started giving him shit. And he said like, lady, if you don't, he got to the point, he's like, lady, if you don't shut up, I'm going to take my dick out and slap you in the face with it. And she goes, you don't have the balls. And he goes, oh, I don't have the balls. And he starts unzipping his pants. The crowd is going fucking nuts because they think he's joking. And he fucking pulled his dick out. Pulled his dick out. (laughs) And he he had it by the shaft. And just his fucking purple head is coming out. (laughs) And he made these machine gun noises. Went (laughs) right in her face, dude. Fucking place went ballistic. Fucking ballistic. Ballistic, and he ended his set there. I hope so, yeah. And Wanda, who was hosting at the time, up and coming, Wanda Sykes, I think she was the host, fucking outroed him and then brought me up. Was it Wanda? Wanda hosted one of the fucked up ones. I can't remember. So brings me up, 
And I had to go on after him, and I was still new to New York, and I was I was already gonna bomb. And he took his dick out and shook it in this fucking woman's face. And dude, I can't even tell you how, how hard I ate it. And I was too green. I didn't know to be like just riff about the guy. Yeah, how taking his dick. That dude, was. I went up and tried to do my act. I went up and I immediately went up and like, gee, it's been raining a lot here in New York City. It just it, it just completely flatlined. So. Yeah, it's like walking into a party and not acknowledging what's just been happening. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, yeah, I think I know who you mean, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there you go. <laughs> when if you watch the Philly rant, there's a time where I look over the the DJ going, dude, why are you yelling out shit? You're fucking me up. I vaguely remember doing that, but what it actually was was Patrice was trying to help me. He yelled out, "Invincible." which would have been a great one to bring up about Philly, which was about a guy who was playing it, was working in a bar, tries out for the Eagles. Not only does he get a tryout, he makes the fucking team and has an impact. Like I could have just gone off on how bad the Eagles sucked. Um, and I, I, he, he, you know, he threw that out there.